Well, good morning, everyone. This is our from L47 from Dallas, Texas, uh, making this video on June the 10th, 2011. And my phone is ringing, and it is 10:56 a.m. Central Time here in Dallas. Uh, this is a map from the Storm Prediction Center, <clears throat> and it shows yesterday's uh, storm reports. And this would be storms that made it to uh, severe levels or also storms that we had tornadoes reported with. So we had two tornadoes reported yesterday. Uh, I'm seeing one up here in Maine and one down here in uh, Kansas. So um, I will get more into that here in a second but lots of wind reports and damaging wind reports and uh, lots of damaging hail reports all up and down this area yesterday again from the uh, clash of the air masses we've got this cold dry air mass trying to come in along a front which moves a little and it kind of backs up and then we've got this extremely humid tropical moist air mass that <clears throat> continues to hang over the eastern section of the US causing the uh, current heat wave that's going on uh, Again, an upper level storm system provided energy for the storms here in the middle section of the United States. So, uh, the Storm Prediction Center was pretty good in their uh, assessment of the potential and severe weather yesterday and their forecast. Okay, here's today's, uh, or the most recent uh, water vapor loop from the satellite, uh, the GOES satellite. And, why well, it never fails, it updates whenever I start talking about it. Anyway, we still have energy remaining back in the northern plains, which continues to give interest in this area. Pretty much along where we saw, I pointed out the severe weather yesterday, we could see again more severe weather again today. Now yesterday we did have that moderate risk up there, and as you saw the convective outlook, uh, or as you'll see on the convective outlook uh, today right now there's only a slight risk for severe weather well, I'll get into that more in a minute again the Tutlo still just hanging here in the uh, uh, eastern gulf and um, as long as it hangs there it continues to throw lots and lots of tropical moisture up into the eastern United States which gives the fuel for those thunderstorms behind this we're getting the cool air. This is helping stage the area for uh, some more severe weather today. Uh, again, probably a lot more uh, reports for some strong winds, uh, large hail, and again, a couple of tornadoes. Uh, you know, can't be ruled out. But uh, again, it, it looks like summer when I look at this, and then it feels like summer to most of the people in the, probably the eastern one third of the United States. Here is the day one convective outlook, which would be the uh, outlook for today's severe weather potential. And again, we see the slot risk that runs uh, pretty much from uh, uh, western Pennsylvania and New York State, western New York State, all the way back into central Oklahoma. Again, that's uh, the slight risk of severe weather, and we probably will again see some uh, damaging wind and hail in this area. Uh, again with maybe a slight risk of a tornado uh, with all the moisture in the eastern sections of the United States and the heat you get all this green which means scattered thunderstorms also an upper level storm system that you probably saw I didn't point out on the uh, water vapor that's slowly coming in to the uh, west coast uh, causing some uh, potential for just regular thunderstorms out here in the west so that's the area again to watch today for the potential for severe weather. Here's the day two outlook just in case you're trying to plan your weekend. Um, <clears throat> this would be for Saturday. Again a slight chance of severe weather here in the uh, central plain, central and northern plains. And again we've got a slight chance in the uh, northern Ohio Valley into the uh, western portions of New York State and uh, the western half or two-thirds of Pennsylvania also into the Virginias down here so uh, severe weather threat does continue in that area as it's been for the last couple of days so again that's Saturday's outlook let's take a look at Sunday's outlook now on the day three outlook they don't put just the general thunderstorm outlook they just put the um, 
outlook for the potential of the, the severe weather, the slight risk area. Again, we see it <clears throat> from the Dakotas uh, down into Nebraska <clears throat> and into Kansas, excuse me. <clears throat> so, again, the central plains, central and northern plains, will be under the gun, <clears throat> and that'll be from that upper level storm moving in from the west. Here's a quick look at uh, current data. This is uh, from my F5 program that ingests uh, National Weather Service data and uh, forecast data, but this is actual current status. Uh, the green shading is dew point, which is you can call the fuel for thunderstorms. Uh, this is ridiculously high dew points for this area of the United States. Uh, to get your bearings, um, here's Michigan, Wisconsin, then we've got uh, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and uh, western New York. Uh, there's Lake Michigan. Um, anytime you see uh, the gradient this tight, in other words, dew points in the uh, 60s, and then back here we've got dew points in the 40s and 50s, <coughs> you see a setup for the potential of thunderstorms and then add in that you've got temperatures down here that are kind of in the upper 80s in places near 90 in some places and back behind that you've got temperatures in the 50s and 60s again you set up the battleground and that's why again as I showed you the area for today of severe weather again will probably be along this area. But I thought I'd show you this map just to give you an idea of what we look for sometimes to see where the battleground is between air masses. The dry cooler air back here and the warm muggy air in front. You got a battleground going on. For those of you that uh, follow Dutch Sense, he had put, had, had put out a bulletin earlier today because uh, he had noted that uh, there was a heat burst at uh, Wichita, Kansas last night and these are always interesting phenomena when they happen uh, this is a graph from the there's my stupid phone uh, this is a graph from uh, again Midcontinent Airport observations now <clears throat> here's the wind direction, the wind direction was out of the south when this heat burst hit the wind direction shifted to the north the winds gusted pretty high right at the same time where you go up to 40 miles an hour with gusts. Temperature went from uh, like in the low 80s to uh, a little above 100 degrees in just less than an hour maybe like 30 minutes so uh, it, the dew point dropped so very dry air comes flying in, very hot air comes blowing in hard, the wind direction changes from south to north. Now this is a phenomenon and they're called heat bursts. Uh, in fact uh, the official uh, observation shows that at 11.53 p.m. in uh, Wichita it was 84 degrees at 12.53 the observation showed a 100 degree reading the high was 102 degrees at 12.42 a.m. at which if you've never experienced something or, or have not ever heard of something like this this can actually scare the hell out of you uh, these are rare phenomenon but they're not unheard of heat bursts happen and they generally happen when a thunderstorm or even a, just a rain shower collapses, it dies and collapses and the wind sinks. Now when the wind begins to sink and fall at a rapid rate, generally it will heat at about, rule of thumb is five and a half degrees for every thousand feet it falls. Now it's got to be falling pretty fast and hard to do the opposite of what normally hot air would do. Hot air likes to rise, you know, but this is falling hard and fast so the wind jumps up and as it's heated compressional heating we get temperatures that can jump amazingly 20 30 degrees now there's a, a story that is was reported here in Texas 
uh, near Lake Whitney back in, uh, it was June, I believe it was June the 11th in 1960, uh, where it was around midnight, I believe, temperatures were in the 70s, and all of a sudden the wind jumped up to over 100 miles an hour, or I take that back, 80 to 90 miles an hour, and uh, did some damaging to uh, trees and uh, some houses. The temperature at the local bait and tackle shop, of course, which is not official, went to 140 degrees. So from 70 somewhere degrees to 140 degree jump in temperature is just unreal. Now, again, this was back in 1960, and, of course, it, it was uh, documented uh, the next day of the damage it did, and uh, some of that uh, footage is probably still available from uh, the local uh, TV station here at KXAS, probably Channel 5, KXAS TV, it's our local NBC station. But, again, it was... it it scared the people in this little town to death. They thought the end of the world was coming for it to for the winds to start blowing. Yeah, it was just a, you know, clear clear night, you know, light winds and the temperature was, you know, again in the 70s and uh that all of a sudden you get the wind blowing uh 80 90 miles an hour and the temperature doubles goes w well above 100. 140 is still hard to believe, but you know, it's not official. I can see a temperature making it uh, like to 110 doing calculations, but even at that, that would scare you to death. Uh, and it happens again just because uh, there were some uh, storms that had been around earlier in the day which had collapsed and died, and then the sinking air heated up and then hit the ground with some awesome ferocity. Uh, Again, even some of the local farmers showed some of their cotton fields. They were actually scorched. I mean, it actually scorched the plants. They were just dead and scorched dry from that. And the next day, everything was back to normal. So again, uh, something very bizarre and awesome to, to experience, I'm sure. And But not all unheard of, but it's just one of those things that just makes you realize that <laughs> nature can just always throw you a curveball when you least expect it. Anyway, that's uh, probably a long, long, long diatribe I didn't mean to get into, but I just kind of wanted to talk about the uh, weather that's been going on and also talk about uh, what Dutch Sense uh, brought to our attention earlier today, which is a, a great catch. Uh, I like it when people keep up with the weather like he does and, and sees these things happen and then uh, gives us a heads up on things. So anyway, thanks again, Dutch, for that. And everybody else uh, in the Northeast, watch out. You can still see some severe weather today and even maybe tomorrow. And uh, other than that, down here in Texas, I'll just continue baking and sweating. That's all I can do down here. Anyway, y'all take care.